Hello viewers, welcome to MOOC's online course on visual perception and art, a survey across the cultures. This is the second lecture of this week and in this lecture we are supposed to encounter the term visual perception in a slightly technical way. What exactly does this term visual perception mean and what are its implications. This is what we are supposed to study today. Now the most common reply to the question what is visual perception would be visual perception is the ability to see and interpret that is analyze and give meaning to the visual information that surrounds us. In a way it is a very very simple definition and you get this kind of definition almost everywhere on any book on visual perception, on any website on visual perception will certainly have this standard definition of visual perception and what it is all about in a very basic way. Natural or artificial, functional or decorative, symbolic or descriptive, intentional or unintentional, all kinds of visual informations are being continuously processed through this unique ability of human being called visual perception. So it is not just a passive reception of the visual data, but it signifies the term visual reception signifies a process a processing of the visual data that we are receiving and that is why the question of interpretation becomes so important here. So the process of taking in one's environment is referred to as perception and if perception is inaccurate, incorrect or altered in any way, problems with reading, spelling, handwriting calculation, mathematics and comprehension may occur. Visual perceptual skills involve the ability to organize and interpret the information that is seen and in turn give it meaning. This makes the definition of visual perception slightly crucial. Coming back to the idea or rather a very weak idea that visual perception is all about receiving passively the visual information. We now understand very very clearly that visual perception is not about simply receiving visual signs or visual data. It is about processing and not also simply about processing but it is about giving the visual information back some meaning, some interpretation, some kind of validity of what we are looking at. So the importance of visual perceptual skills in the academic success in our daily life is agreed upon by many. Acknowledging reading would not be possible without adequate visual perception. Acknowledging that even comprehension would not be possible without adequate visual perception. Acknowledging that even the development of our intelligent faculty or our intellectual faculty is not possible without adequate visual perception. So in other words visual perception has a whole set of very important functions to play in our evolution, in our bringing up. Visual perceptual skills include several key component areas. For example, visual discrimination, the ability to notice detailed differences such as shape, size, color or other dimensional aspects. 
form constancy that is form discrimination, the ability to perceive positional aspect differences and recognize objects when they are in a different orientation or format. So, we know a object visually not from only one particular angle. If we were to see the same object from an absolutely different angle in a different context, in a different position, then our visual perceptual skill should assure us that we will be able to recognize that object, even if it is found in a completely different environment. So, the perceptual skill is not only about receiving, but it is also about recognizing. Then thirdly, another very important aspect or area component area is figure ground. The relationship between the object and space, the object and object, the ability to focus on a selected target and screen out or ignore the irrelevant images and thereby make some meaning out of it. Visual perceptual skills also include areas like spatial relationship, the ability to recognize and also mentally measure the positioning of objects in space. So, even before you actually go and reach that particular point, the, just by looking you are supposed to have a sense of uh, distance between let us say one object and another object, between yourself and another object, because this is how we measure the distance also from a far away position. This is a perceptual skill, a visual perceptual skill. Then visual closure, the ability to recognize an object, letter or number without seeing all of the object. Even if you are not able to see the entire human being, but just by having a glimpse of a certain portion of that person, you are able to know, okay, he is my brother, she is my mom, he is my friend and who is that person? How do you do that? You have not seen that entire person, but just a portion of an object or a person or anything. Visual sequencing, the ability to see objects in a particular sequential order. Visual memory is extremely important in this context, because the ability to remember forms, letters, also objects, shapes and sequences of forms, whether it is words or even objects in daily life and recognize them quickly when seen again is certainly a very, very important ability, which we exercise almost every day, every moment in our waking life. Now, scientifically speaking, our brain receives information from the retina, then using a hierarchical method processes this information using different parts of the brain that is lateral, geniculate, nucleus and the primary and secondary visual cortex of the brain. The main problem with the visual perception is that it is not simply a translation of the image seen by the retina, making it rather difficult for scientists to explain what we actually see. So, it is not simply a retinal process, it is more than that, it is an intellectual process, it is a mental process it is a psychological process and by the same token it is a cultural process as well which we have mentioned in our last lecture. So, it is interesting to know that human vision is not the only way the world is seen, animals see the world in different ways than us. Some animals do not even see the world, but rely on other senses for example, bats and dolphins. Flies have what is known as composite eyes, a TV run at 25 frames per second, but to a fly this is very slow. Birds such as hawks can see up to 8 times further than a human being. Field of vision also is limited on a human to a between 160 to 240, whereas a hare's field of vision is 360. So, there is a tremendous difference between human beings and other animals and birds in terms of their visual capacity. Different creatures vary the amount of brain is dedicated to vision. 
the octopus dedicates 50 percent to sight, but we still do not know how other creatures make sense of what their eyes see. No single creature can see all what others can. We forget that the human world of vision is only one such world. So, what we perceive visually as human beings is not the full truth of a visual perception. It is not the entire truth. Some other creature can have a different entirely a different experience of the visual rea reality around us. Now, it is also interesting to know that Hermann von Helmholtz is who is often credited with the first study of visual perception in modern times examined the human eye and he concluded that it was optically rather poor. The poor quality information gathered via the eye seemed to him to make vision impossible. He therefore concluded that vision could only be the result of some form of unconscious inferences, a matter of making assumptions and conclusions from incomplete data based on previous experiences. Now, following Dr. Herman's theories, it uh, is very evident that as far as human beings are concerned, our visual perception is certainly visual as much as it is intellectual, mental and memory plays a very important role in experiencing what we experience through our visual perception. So, the world is seen in different ways by different creatures. As humans, we put a large emphasis on visuals. We do not always believe our eyes, we know that a pencil in a glass jar will look bent and that a moon closer to the horizon will appear bigger and that there are such things as optical illusions. Now, since we encounter optical illusions almost every day, so we do not believe in what we see in its entirety, we use our intelligence in order to interpret it properly. So, humans as a species are driven by a desire to find meaning. Now, this relates to the title because as humans we are all homo significance that is meaning makers, we all make meanings instead of simply relying on what we see, we begin to construct meanings derived out of our visual experiences. Now, this is proved with few simple shapes and lines that the mind strives to find meaning in. What do you see here? Look at this diagram. You are more likely to see 5 pairs close together than 4 pairs more spaced out with a line either side spare. We do this because the brain puts the closer objects together. So, there is a particular way of looking at things though there could be various other possibilities of visually interpreting. Now, other possibilities are possible only when we consciously apply those possibilities. Otherwise, there is a certain habit of making some meaning out of what we are looking at. Now, two very well known experiments on this aspect of visual illusion are the scintillating grid illusion and optical illusion. This strange but common phenomenon pertaining to visual perception was given a special emphasis by Hermann von Helmholtz. He believed that vision was a form of unconscious inference. Inference is the act of process of deriving a conclusion based solely on what one already knows and visual illusions are the results of such assumptions. In other words, whether in life or in art, while perceiving things visually, we often forget that we make sense of what we see or what we look at, because 
we base our perception to a large extent on several assumptions knowingly or unknowingly. These assumptions are often very helpful, they are part of our memory, but these assumptions can also be very tricky particularly when we are looking at some tricky diagrams or some optical elusive diagrams and drawings like this. The scintillating grid illusion, black spots will seem to appear very quickly at the intersections, though there is not a single intersection in this diagram where there is actually a black spot. This is a complete illusion that black spots begin to appear at the intersection, though there is no black, why it happens. So, the whole phenomenon can be explained by using this theory that there is a whole process of inference that parallelly functions when we are visually perceiving or looking at something and we cannot stop that. We cannot stop our assumptions, we cannot stop those inference processes, the processes that keep on inferring something or the other. Similarly, another diagram, if you focus on the black dot right at the center and if you move your head back and forth like this, then that will create the illusion that two circles are moving whereas, in reality these two circles are absolutely static. So, how come this happens? Again a complex visual phenomenon where assumptions are involved, inferences are involved, certain tricks that keep happening in our brain are involved, these are the things that make these illusions happen. Now, how do visual perceptions work or why do they happen in the first place? A visual stimulus misleads our perception or meaning making of that stimulus. This happens because we apply perceptual constancies to what we are seeing because they are our rules and we make a false judgment because we misjudge length, position, speed, direction, curvature, everything. So, there is always this chance of misjudging. This is, there is always this chance, chance of misleading ourselves, not that we do it consciously or deliberately, we, it happens and we simply cannot do anything about it. And these optical illusions, these very tricky ways of perceiving the visual reality have become a part of our visual experience. One more very common diagram which many of you must have already seen that even a naturalistic drawing of an elephant such as this can pose hell lot of a problem in the context of visual illusion. I guess you can make out what kind of illusions this particular elephant is making to us and if you are not able to make out just let me put a simple question to you while you are looking at this drawing of an elephant elephant that how many legs this elephant has, just begin to count the number of legs this elephant has, you would know the trick has begun to work. Then you have this very well known Muller liar illusion, where it consists of two lines that are equal in length to each other, one has arrow heads attached and one has fish tails attached. Now, if I may ask you which line is the bigger one in length, what will be your answer? If you have seen this diagram before, of course, you will immediately say that both lines are actually equal in length and you are right, that is one thing. But please look at the diagram once again and tell me that though we know that and we can even measure by using a scale that the both these lines are equal in length, but do not you think that they appear different from each other? Do not you think that the line with arrow heads appear to be 
longer in length than the line which has a kind of uh, fish tail or maybe the other way round. I mean whatever it is they do not actually look exactly the same. Perhaps if you look at the line with the fish tail it generally would look longer than the line with the arrowhead. So, it is our brain that is continuously misleading us. Another diagram of the same kind where you have lines of the same length, but because of their association they all tend to look slightly different from each other, which is again an optical illusion. Now, it is true that the study of visual illusions cases when the inference process goes wrong has yielded much insight into what sort of assumptions the visual system makes. Misleading visual perceptions or visual illusions are truly irritating to say the least in our daily life. It disturbs our cognition, it upsets our visual processing, it results from certain inconsistencies, yet it is these inconsistencies that are extremely useful in the realm of visual arts. Communications in visual arts take place many a time through these inconsistencies and wrong assumptions. They help in creating what we call art language. In other words what is considered as an optical illusion or an experience of optical illusion could actually help the artist to make some beautiful and significant statement in their art. So, optical illusion can be really really very frustrating and irritating in our daily life, but it could be a very useful tool for the artist to convey a statement visually in a very effective way. In fact, as viewers of fine arts or visual arts, we too are not devoid of assumptions. When we go to look at a sculpture or a painting, it is not that our mind is a blank slate or tabula rasa. Our mind already carries assumptions, it already carries certain ideas of consistencies and inconsistencies. Hence, the brain tends to lead or let us say mislead us and it is at this juncture that the artist is able to make some very useful innovation in their art language. This is something that we shall study in one of our later lectures. Now, it is because of these assumptions a so called incomplete drawing like this for example, looks complete and fulfilling. In spite of the fact that a number of details are missing in this drawing of a seated figure, we tend to overlook what is missing and we begin to almost see everything that is absent and thus making the picture complete. Now, why does it happen that a painting like this though we know there are several details missing here, we do not simply care about that. We can complete the details uh, in our mind and we really do not feel at all uh, uncomfortable that this particular drawing is incomplete. That is not the idea that actually bothers us. For example, this one. Now, do not you think uh, does it really matter that the figure is a headless one in this drawing? Do you really realize that it is a headless one unless I brought that uh, bring that into your notice? Do we really feel that the man does not have a head even if we have noticed it? So, unless there are two things one I bring this into your attention, I draw your attention to this aspect that this figure does not have a head and then you realize wow this figure does not have, but anyway it does not matter because there is a tremendous expression in the figure which uh, 
a kind of uh, downplays the absence of the head or it may happen that you do not even notice this absence of head in the first glimpse, but even when you notice it later you do not care, your mind has already fulfilled the gaps. So, visual perception hence is not only about receiving visual data, but it is also about filling up the world with data and visual inputs thus making a sense, thus completing the circle. Thank you.